Great. So we're coming uh, to today's section. Yeah, we are going to look at the question solving stage of IAS2. Question solving stage of IAS2 event. So IAS2 basically talks about accounting for event use. Now, if you pick all the standards, If you pick any standard, there are about five items that we should know about that standard. Number one, objectives and scope. So a quick summary. This is a summary of IS2. Number two, talks about terms. So basic definition, so terms. Some of items were defined in the standard, you should know them. Number three, you should know their recognition that item number four the measurement and then number five is the disclosure most of your questions are centered in these three the terms recognition and measurement that is all so a summary, before we solve the questions, summary. So if I've gone through the previous lecture video on inventory, that talks about everything about inventory, that goes into detail, you've come across this in it. So I'll just go straight and then emphasize something more on this too, because most of the questions on inventory are on this. When you talk about recognition, it talks about how do you record such item or such transaction? So how do you record inventory? How do you record inventory? That is recognition. Good. So I'll quickly talk something more about it. Now, recognition, there are two types of inventory. We have sold inventory, sold inventory, or sold goods. And we also have unsold. Now, sold inventory, that one is an expense. So it must be recorded as an expense, preferably cost of sales. A typical one is the open inventory. That is why in the cost of sales, you add open inventory. So sold inventory are uh, expense. And it must form part of the direct expense. That's the cost of sales. Good. That is all. What about unsold inventory? Inventory that leftover. For leftover, they are not expense so therefore they are recorded as what asset so they are recorded as asset into bracket current asset so that's why you see closing inventory on the balance sheet as a current asset the same way you see open inventory in the cost of sales all of them bought or match to the actual concept or the matching concept Which states that if you want to determine the year's profit, add all the year's worth revenue, match it against the year's expense. Uh -huh. So the sold inventory, the revenue is in the sales. So that's why the cost of the sold inventory should be part of the expenses. Uh -huh. But on sold inventory, the revenue has not been generated. It will be generated in the next period. So that's why we are taking it off and send to the next period so that when we sell it there, then we will now match it. That is all by recognition. I'm down with recognition. Then I'll talk something small about measurement. Then we, stay, we start the question solving. Good. 
then we start a question solving. Please, if you want a full section, or not even a full section, you should be able to go through the full section before you come to this stage. At this stage, we are only solving questions. How the question should be addressed. The full section has been discussed earlier. So can you look at that? So measurement. When you talk about measurement, there are two types. Type one, we call it initial measurement. If a point is very free initially, what will be the initial value? Measurement talks about value. So if if a point goes, let's say on June, you bought some goods. December is a reporting period. So June, what will be the value that you place on these goods? That's what we mean by what initial measurement. Another type is subsequent measurement. That will be December's valuation. Initial measurement is at what cost? So the cost that you incur, the cost that you incur to acquire these goods. The cost that you incur, which include one, the purchase cost, two, convention cost, and then three, any other costs incurred necessary to bring the asset to its present condition or location. Okay. Some of the costs must be excluded, such as what storage cost of finished goods. Storage cost of finished goods should be excluded. Administration, general, and distribution costs should be excluded from the cost of what? Inventory. Finally, initial operating losses must also be what? Excluded from it. And then we add them. Okay, so that's all for the initial measurements. Then you go to subsequent measurement. In summary, subsequently, the word subsequent measurement simply means measurement after the initial recognition or the initial measurement. After June's value, in which you stated it as cost, because the total cost was 30,000 to acquire such goods. Now, in December, in December valuation, what will be the value? So December, the next reporting period, and then the next reporting period, and the subsequent one and subsequent ones, what will be the value? So when you talk about subsequent measurement, it is the measurement at the end of the reporting period. And trust me, most of your questions are subsequent measurement because they will tell you to do the accounting treatment at the end of this particular reporting period. That's subsequent measurement. Almost all the questions they ask you is about subsequent measurement, not initial measurement. Only few examiners ask initial measurement. Good. So subsequently, inventory must be measured as well, the lower of cost and net risable value. So compare two items and let the least one among. So lower of this cost and what? And now the net realizable value. That is all. You compare this and you select the rest among the two. Good. So now we compare cost. How do you get a cost? But this is not right in big here for you to get a principle before we start solving the question. So lower. Oh, that is a okay. Cost and NRV net realizable value. Now the question: What's the cost here? IS two provides specific cost formulas. We call it cost formulas, or how we should determine the cost. Yes, because. If you apply something 30,000 about six months ago or four months ago, uh, the cost of it 
maybe you deal with a lot of goods. So determine the actual cost to come to it because it is cost from right here. The first on the list is actual. Actual cost in which I'll explain. The next one is people or people and weighted average cost method. Weighted average cost. However, LIPO is banned by IST. We don't use LIPO. No. We don't use LIPO to value event technology. We don't use LIPO to value event and the IST. But under the US GAP, LIPO is not banned. If I use the US GAP to prepare a financial statement, you can still use LIPO. But if I use IFRSs, LIPO is banned. Not in management accounting, just in financial reporting. So, so these are the cost from this. Now, let's assume that you are using the actual cost. Actual cost is what we learned under the initial cost. The actual cost of the goods. So let's assume that you are using the actual cost. In which we said it's made up of what? One, the purchase cost. Two, convention cost. And three, any other cost, right? Other cost, okay. NRV, how do you get NRV? Now we are okay with what cost. Now let's go to NRV. NRV, net realizable value. NRV, net realizable value. NRV. Now, NRV simple means amount that I can recover from this true sale. If I should sell this item right now, how much will I cover? After that, all costs for it, all selling costs, how much will I recover or realize? Okay. If I'm defining NRV, I have to see estimate three times. How much? If I should sell it today, that does, not, that does not mean that I've made a sale right now. So take note, NRV is not actual, it's an estimate. It's an estimate or expected, something that you were expected slash your estimate. So everything here is estimate, take note. Everything here is actual cost if you care to date. All cost in care to date. Okay. Now, what happened is this. It is equal to estimated selling price. So much. Estimated selling price less what? Estimated cost to complete. Again, less estimated cost to sell. Yeah. Then finally, we have our NRV. Nice. Great. Now, after you get the NRV, after you have your NRV, then you now compare it with what almighty cost. So this and this. Then you select what the list among them. So that is summary of IST. If, um, if you don't understand anything in IST, not this presentation. Yes. So um, that is the game. Now we'll end with the illustration. And we'll start solving questions. The first question I will ask this At what instant will this NRV be lower than the cost? You have a goose. You bought it 30,000 some months ago or some days ago. 
30,000. But now, if we should sell these goods, you get 30, you get something lower than 30. What can cause that? Or what's the circumstance? One, if the goods are out, outmoded, out of date, obsolete, or the goods are damaged, look at how they sell accident cars or accident engines. It can also be management intention. Yes, competition. I've seen how some years back, Coke reduced their price. Yes, that's in price. So that is it. Okay, so we'll go through the material and start solving all the questions one after the other. Okay, so let's look at these particular questions. Let's look at these particular questions. Okay. So with this, I will solve all the examples. So let's go. Example one. Example one. The following figures relate to inventory had by MYF Limited at the year end costs. Okay, let's go to the comment. Calculate the value of inventory held. The value of the inventory held. So the products are A, B, C. So cost selling price, multiplication cost, enable the sale. So something like this. If I, we are starting from easy, 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 and gradually you enter into what? The dangerous ones. Okay. And gradually you enter into the dangerous one. So. Here, there are three booths, or the inventories are three. So you do them in a column form. In reality, most companies have a lot of events. Take Unilever. Unilever, for instance, have a lot of events. Different, different, different times. So you do them column by column. So the value to be placed on the events. The value to be placed on the inventory or just the inventory value. Product A, product B, and product what C. It said to value inventory after the compare two items, the cost of the inventory and what net realizable value. The one that I don't have, I will do work and use on them. So let's go and pick this from the question. So if you go and if I arrange it anyhow. Or they put any item there, please and please you have to go by this approach. So let's see. So the cost is 29 tops. That's 29 tops. 29 tops. And now if it's not given to us, you have to perform the workings. How do you perform the workings? So I come here and say NRV. Let's show the working selling price and cost to complete. Now, this cost to complete and this cost to sell. Detailed explanation has been included in the previous material. So, kindly take note of that. Later, I'll add is this when you talk about cost to complete, is a cost that I have to. In care before I can complete the sale. I've not said anything. Let me give you a quick example. Assume I'm selling a mobile phone here. The cost to complete simple means I, I should to change certain things. Maybe the housing, change the memory size to suit the customer's preference. That's the cost to complete. Please, it does not mean that the product is not completed. No. The product is fully complete and has been completed. Just that before that customer will buy, I have to do certain things on the product before that customer buy. So every customer and their, their preferences. So that will complete that particular sale. Good. So that is it. So let's go to this question to pick just the Selling price is 30, 12, 22. 30, 12, 22. 
seven prime to the thirty plus twenty two. Then what again? Normally the cost to complete, we thought that multiplication cost. You have to modify the product. If you are selling rice, especially if it's a uh, local rice, people are not buying the local rice. They want the exotic ones. So you just have to go and buy the exotic sap, like Lily, Uncle Sam. So you buy the, the exotic bag, you come and now put your local rice in exotic bag and sell it as what exotic rice. The way it's illegal, non ethical in the market. Our local traders are doing that. Good. So the sack that they have to acquire is what has to complete the sale. It does not mean that the rice is not ready. No, the rice is ready. So let's go and pick the modification cost to enable the sale. That's the cost to complete. Uh, first one is dash, so 2, 8. Dash, 2, and then 8. The modification cost. What's the NRV for each of the products? So therefore, NRV will be NRV. And I will be 30. So be 30. Here will be 10. Here will be 14. So let's record them here. 30, 10, 14. Inventory must be measured at what lower. So we compare the cost and then I'll be actually lower. Or the list among them. So here let's select the value. So the value will be uh, 20 and 30. So I'll select for the list 20, 9 and 10, 9, 12 and 14, 12. They say for instance that all the costs were lower. So for instance. Then we check the what you've done is per unit. What we have done here is per unit, but they have unit health. This is the unit health, 200, 150, 300. So now we have to value this 150 at what? At the lower of the cost and the NRV. So you need to get the totality, the total, and get the overall total. So let me take off the NRV calculation and bring the unit health. They have 200, 150, and 300. The total value will be this and this. That should give us 4,000, right? Time by this. That should give us 13,500, if possible. This and this, 3,600. Then finally, you add all of them together and get overall total. Overall total agreed. So you sum all up 4,000 plus 13, 50. Again, plus 3,600. And then that is it. Okay. So eight nine five zero to the barrel data eight nine five zero. So in your financial statement, you have to key in eight nine five zero in your books as well as the inventory value that is our first illustration however you can also start by multiplying this can be multiplying but the one will be a bit time from now let's move on to the next illustration 
Illustration two, or example two. Emmet Company has a cost card in relation to an item of goods and purchase that follows. Uh, let's go to the requirement. Required. According to IAS to inventories, at what figure should the item be valued in inventory? So here they are just asking for the initial measurement. We said the initial measurement of the inventory is at cost, and the cost comprises of what one purchase cost, which include delivery, handling, transportation, and then any purchase taxes that you cannot you cannot claim it back. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with this, let's go to the board. So the inventory must be valued at cost, and these are the cost calculations. That's where you start from. This inventory must be valued at cost. At cost, must be valued at cost. Must be valued at cost. So question two. So there's another value of the inventory. First item on the list is material. Will it be part? So material cost, yes, it should be part. Material cost is 70, it should be part. So I'll go ahead and write it down. The next item on the list will be um storage cost of fridge goods. Will it be part? No. So storage cost of fridge goods should not be part. Great. Now, delivery to customer. Should it be part? Delivery cost should it be part. Delivery cost should it be part. I think this delivery cost should not be part. This delivery cost will not be part. Why? Because they say delivery to customers. It sounds like distribution cost. Selling and distribution cost. So we meanwhile we have to manufacture the product first before we deliver it to customer. So we are interested in before we make the product come live, before we produce the product, before we supply it to the customer. What is the product cost? That is it. So this delivery is not like you are the cost incurred from bringing these materials to your factory. No. It's after the production, the cost that you incur to deliver these goods to the customers. So that one will not be part. But we are interested in the cost that you incur to bring the goods to your present condition and location. Okay. So to not be part, it must be explained in the BNL. Delivery customer should not be part. Now the next item will be irrecoverable purchase tax. Should it be part? Irrecoverable purchase tax. Should it be part? Irrecoverable purchase tax. Should it be part? Irrecoverable. Now, irrecoverable purchase tax, it should be part, it's part of the cost. We said that any tax that you pay on the goods that you cannot recover or retrieve those taxes, can you add it? So it's part. Okay. So basically, that is so the figure is six, right? So I'll add a six to it. So if you pop up, Purchase tax. So therefore, if you want 
76. I'm done. The rest, when I go there to be part, we'll just discuss. Yes, it must be part, it should not be part. Like that, to move on. Those that will be new, we will solve them. Yeah, that I have my target question to solve. I've not reached there yet. All this is to just declare the way, to push the way, to make the way. Okay. Now the last illustration or the next illustration. The next one talks about SNM company produces units for products of UB06. The following cost has been incurred direct material and labor. So the first one, direct material and labor, should it be part of the cost? Yes, I think that should be part. So we add it. The next item on the list, variable production overhead. Will it be part? Or should it be part of variable production overhead? Mm -hmm. Viable production overhead. Any questions? Viable production overhead. Yes, viable production overhead should be part one. There was a production overhead. So it should be part. Now let's see the next section. Okay, so so far we have 1.8, 1.25. Now let's continue the game. Factory administrative cost. Will it be part? Factory administrative cost. Will it be part? Factory administrative cost. Will it be part? Yes, to be part. So. Factor administrative overhead should not be part. What about fixed production cost? Fixed production cost. So fixed production overhead, a fixed production cost. Okay, I can see no, yes, no, no, yes. But fit production overhead, it should be part. Yeah, the standard is saying that it must be absorbed on the normal activity level. So fixed production overhead will be part of be part of the cost of inventory. So fixed production will be part. So if I should end here, only the factory administrative wise that will not be part. The rest are part. So it will be two dot two five. So that's the end of this particular question. If I do one, you do one. Now you are doing example four right away. Then. What happens is, as soon as you are done, you take a picture of it, then you forward it to me on WhatsApp or any media or medium. I'll pick it up. Good. So first, material. Yes, it will be part. The material will be part. OK.
Okay, so received all answers received. So first material, yes, it will be part. Production labor, yes, it will be part. Production overhead, yes, it will be part. General administrative cost. No, it must be excluded. It must be added. Treated as expense in the PNL. Marketing costs, you exclude. That's all. Example five is your trial work. Example five is trial work. Now let's go to example six. That box on to event written off or event written down. The treatment. Okay, let's try that one also. And I will use the uh, from here from that example five up to example seven a trial. Let me go into the tutorial questions. Let's go to the tutorial question two. Uh, I'll start with question three and I'll come to November 1999 past question. Now let's go to question three. Question three A. So November, no, tutorial question three A. Each of the questions are they are on their own. So the A is different from that of the B. So start work, the A. So let's start work with the A. Okay, so we can uh, continue the game here. It goes like this. You are required to value the following items of event. A material costing $12,000 bought for a processing and assembly for a profitable special order. Since buying this item, the cost price has fallen to $10,000. What is the value of this material? Eventually, should be valued at the lower of what cost and net realizable value. Now, what's the cost here? What's the NRV here? So, to solve questions like this, I normally do something like this. Uh, material. This event is about material. I put cost here. I put NRV here. So, this question, they, they said they bought it. So, costing $12,000. What about the NRV? And they said, since buying, the cost price has fallen to $10,000. Is that an NRV? No. That is the replacement cost. So if you go and buy the same item again, you get that $10,000, not $4,000 that you acquired. That. So this is replacement cost. So this $10,000 is called Replacement cost. Replacement cost. If you should place these goods right now, it will cost you $10,000 to replace these goods. And that is a replacement cost. IS2 did not say that we should value inventory at the lower cost and what replacement cost. So, and as it was not given, it was just batch. So, therefore, this inventory should be valued at what four thousand. That is it. This inventory should be valued at twelve thousand. This inventory 
should be valued at 12,000. Agreed. NRA was not given this question, so the only information made available, uh, we have 12,000. The 10,000 is not NRV. Instead, it, it is what? Replacement cost. And we don't use replacement cost. So we should take note. We don't use the replacement cost. Okay, so in short, this rule should be valued at what? At cost, which is 12,000, not the NRV. Because you don't have the NRV in simple code. You don't have the NRV here. No NRV is given. So 12,000 all the way. 12,000 all the way. 10,000 is replacement cost. Yeah, then. Now let's move on to the next ones. So let's go to the B. There's a question here for me. Okay, so to go over, we are saying that the they give us cost of the material. This is the material they acquired. We shouldn't forget that this is actual, actual cost incurred to date. Put them together. And now is an estimate. Okay. So here they are saying that they bought the material for 12,000 for production. And some time later, or after the acquisition, the cost price, which is 12,000, has fallen to what? 10,000. So you are seeing this 10,000 is called replacement cost, not the NRV. The 10,000 is a replacement cost. If they should replace this material right now, they will get that 10,000, not 12,000. So therefore, it is the cost that they will incur to replace the material to replace this material, but not to sell this material. So in short, the NRV was not given, so put dash there. So you compare. Now once one is not there, just list this as the cost of the event or the value. So therefore this material should be measured at what? 12,000. Great. So that is. Now let's look at the B part. Let's look at the B part. From there, then I will look at inventory written down yeah, and go straight to November 2017. Good. Okay, with the B part, we try that one or we should do it together. Okay, let's look at the B part. Is it B, equipment constructed for a customer for an agreed price of 18,000. This has recently been completed at a cost of, let me start all over again. Let's go to the board. Question like that. I'll start by doing this, arranging, setting the tone, and set equipment all right here. I'm determining the value of the equipment. So the equipment, the value. 
I say lower of, let me put a cost here. Let me put NLV. So that any figure that tell me, I will just move it from there. Now it's a recommend constructed for a customer for an agreed price of 18,000. Agreed price, that'll be what? Estimated selling price. So what will it be? Estimated selling price will be right here. Estimated selling price. It says $18,000. So I'll write it down. Okay. Now let's see. Line by line, though. Line by line consolidation. This has recently been completed at a cost of $16,800. Mm, completed. They are done with their assets. So completed cost. Right here, the cost. That's the total. Now they've done the demarcation of the total. For instance, they've added a purchasing cost, production cost, or the convention cost. If added all, let me view where is the case. So that we have the purchase cost so much. We have the cost to convert the raw material. We have purchase of raw material. Cost to convert it and then add any other cost. Now they say they are done. So the entire cost is what? 16,800, that's the cost, completed cost. Putting all these three together, that's what they have. That is this. You know, a manufacturer will go through this process to determine. So sometimes they somehow give you the completed cost already. It has been recently be completed. We said that this is the actual, actual. And it includes cost incurred to date. Actual cost incurred what to date. Very important incurred to date. And this is future item. We've not incurred any of this except in extreme cases. So now they've done the total. They've given us the total. Once it has been completed, raw material, convention, any other. So line by line, only. line by line. Now let's continue the game. They said that it has now been discovered that in order to meet certain regulations, convention with an extra cost of $4,200 will be required, will be required in future, will be required. It has not been incurred. Will be incurred, will be incurred. If not incurred, that cost would be required or would be incurred, okay. Now the customer has accepted partial responsibility and agreed and agreed to meet half of the extra cost. So here the customer will obey half so you have to use just half. If the customer will bear half, then that means the company to also bear what the other half. So we can't take the full cost. So here it means that that is cost to complete. It's an example of cost to what to complete. You open a bracket, 4,200 times one over two, half, 2,100. Then you find the NLV nicely like this. Okay. Okay, so it means that the NLV will be $15,900. So that is it. 
it means that this inventory then now will be worth $15,900. Now, even though there's a conversion cost here, the examiner confuses us to say that this is conversion cost. It's like extra cost, something that we have to like incur extra in order to sell these products. And that is what the cost to complete that we are talking about cost to complete cost to complete cost to complete okay so that is it Now let's continue the game. Now, in this case, how? What would be the value of the inventory? Inventory must be valued at the lower of what cost and their net reserve value. Please, we should not compute ourselves with cost to complete with the convention cost. So, most cases, you brought the 4,000. 200 here, right? And you add it to this. Okay, that probably gives the 21,000. Uh -huh. Now, the issue is this the conversion cost is the cost you've incurred to date. You've already incurred, not cost that you are yet to incur. No. Cost to complete are cost that you have to work, like the modification extra something that you have to do extra on a product for that particular customer uh -huh. that is it. so now in short this goods or this equipment must be valued at what fifteen thousand nine hundred. why it's lower so this equipment must be valued at what Fifteen thousand nine hundred. Now let me ask you a question. These two figures, which of them is actual? Sixteen thousand eight hundred and fifteen thousand nine hundred. Which of them is actual? And which of them is an estimate? Most often, the estimates are not in a book. So now, sixteen thousand eight hundred is actual. Thank you. So this is actual. This is what estimate. Now, anytime the NLV, which is the estimate, happen to be the lower, it calls for an accounting treatment. I like that. Let me repeat. Anytime the NLV, which is the estimate, happen to be the lower, it calls for an accounting treatment. However, if the cost is lower, that's the actual. Oh, the other one, you do nothing. No accounting treatment. They should move on. Good. So take note of that. Now let's look at accounting treatment. This is a clear case of inventory written down. You have some goods that cost is 16,800. But as of now, the NLV stood at what? 15,900. So that means part of this goods should be written off. So we call it even written off. So you find the difference. The difference is what? 900, right? And that is the accounting treatment. And that is what you are going to look at for. So I write some few terms down and then we look at the accounting treatment. So anytime the NRV happen to be uh, lower, you have to do certain ritual. All what you're doing, you have to make sure that out of the day, this actual, you have written this actual, because it's an actual, it has been recorded. Let me write it here. It has been what? Recorded. 
because this is an estimate it has yet to be recorded yet so now then it means that they recorded that wrong one or the one which is not true what do you do to perform magic i don't the do you take this one off and bring this guy in that is all that's all about accounting treatment mm -hmm. so here i write some three statements down all of them in the same thing statement number one this event or if you know the name so here the name is what equipment so the equipment must be valued at what at fifteen thousand nine hundred bracket lower, or it must be valued at what NRV. The equipment must be valued at what NRV, or the fifteen thousand nine hundred. That's a fair statement. I will get it. Let me go to the second statement. The equipment or the inventory should be written down should be written down by nine hundred dollars that's a difference should be written down by nine hundred dollars so if you find if you do your measurements and then the energy happens to be lower tell them that they have to reduce this cost to the energy so that was the statement Okay, so that is it. So let's write those statements down. Let me write those statements here. All of them are in the same neighborhood, just in application. The statements that I wrote. Oh, so statement number one is that the inventory should be. Value or measure the inventory should be valued as what the NRV bracket uh, lower and bring the figure dollars right of fifteen thousand nine hundred fifteen nine hundred. And let's go to point two. He said that the inventory should be written written down by nine hundred dollars or the third one. Inventory should be written down to $15,900. That is all. Not, but they're all the same. Don't make any difference. Yeah. Then we we'll go to the accounting treatment. We we'll go to the accounting treatment. We we'll go to the accounting treatment. This is where you have to take. So let's go to the accounting treatment. I'll be down here. Accounting treatment. Treatment number one. We are treating the 900 accounting treatment of the written down value or the written of. In this case, the $900. How do you read it in your book? In this case, the $900. So, number one. Add it to your cost of sale. Add it to your cost of sale. Into bracket, that's the debit. 
debit your cost of deals. Number two, subtract it from their cost. Subtract from the cost of the inventory. You back at that like credit. In fact, this one goes to the financial position. This one goes to the PNL. Or in simple code, here if it's a double digit, the same as the number. So you can just send the number because if I have 16,800 and I take 900 from it, it will give me or to send me back to out of the NRV of what 15,900 taking to where the financial position taking to the financial position. So this is the accounting treatment. However, if you do have purchases in the question, it will require a different treatment. And I'll walk you through all this extra math. So from now going, if you now entered into the examination room, look at how to ask the questions. Okay, so now let's continue the game. Let's continue the game. So to that question four will be your own. I'll do tutorial question five. I'll do tutorial question five. Tutorial question five. Tutorial question five. Now, why do we add it to cost of sales? We add it to cost of sales because it's an expense. You have some goods there, and that goods, your cost is 16,800. If we should sell these goods today, right now, the expected amount will drop to 15,900. You realize that you are losing by what? 900. So, it must be added to your expenses. But this type of expense is what is a direct expense. That's why we are adding to cost of sales. Even to reduce inventory. Inventory is the cost of sales calculation. That's why we add it to your event. So let's take a look. Now let's look at a practical example of this. Now let's go through this examples before I'll come back to my question five. Let's go to these examples. So this is a trial balance prepared by directors of Success Limited. Let's go to the footnote one. The net realizable value of the inventories as of 31st March 2019 are estimated to be worth 37.3 million. So they've, they've given you the NRV straightforward, 37.3 million. If we check the trial balance, the cost of the inventory is there. Inventory, inventory, inventory is here. This is the cost of the inventory. And this is a closing inventory. Good. Now the cost is what? 41,200. So let's go to the board. I'll compare. So what I'll do is, I should do a cost versus NRV. The cost here is 41,200. NRV is 39,300. So how do we value this event? So the inventory. So what, what should be the value of the inventory? Will it be 41,200 or 
Okay. No, it's 37,300. 37,300. Sorry, let me change. 37, 37,300. So here, what would be the inventory value? It should be 37,300. Okay. So here we are saying that if you measure and then the NRV happen to be the least one or the lower, perform this accounting treatment. So first of all, you find the rating down value. Good. You find the rating down value. So you have a goods that cost 41, but you can only generate 37. Now, we don't need to sell it before we, tell, we like to ourselves that we made a loss. So step one, add the written down value to cost of goods. So find the difference between this and this. Which will be around 3,900 or 2,900, one of them. Get the difference. What will be the difference? 41, 47. So that will be 3,900, right? So add this 3,900 to the cost of sales. So if you go to the question and you are calculating the cost of sales, where's the cost of sales? This is the cost of sales figure, 217,100. So I'll tell the examiner that accounting treatment. So first, I'll go to cost of sales. Right here, cost of sales calculation. Per the trial balance, I'll tell the examiner that um, 217100. Go down, tell the examiner. Inventory written down, and I'll put 3,900. In fact, I'll show it in bracket, something minus something. I'll get 3,900. That'll be 41,200. And that is 37,300. That is it. Then I will go to my financial position. If I go to my financial position, the balance sheet, current asset, to so the size, there's inventory figure there. When I go, go there, I write inventory. And then the figure, I open a bracket. I'll take the cost 41,200 and I'll subtract what 3,900. This thing is not done anything. The finance is what obviously it is what uh, 37,300. So the same as you take 37,300 straight to the balance sheet. So this is the practical or illustration. I hope you get it. Good. Now, if I understand this, I will project another question again, then you also try them. Because if I do one, that also do one. Okay, so here we are saying that compare the cost to the NRV. 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 If the NRV is lower, all what you have to do is find a difference between the cost and the NRV. Add it to the cost of sales. That's the treatment number one. Number one. Subtract it from the event figure on the balance sheet number two, and that is the accounting treatment. You do this if and only if the NRV is what? NRV is lower. Good. Okay. So basically, we are saying that find a difference and then add it to your cost of sales and subtract from where 
the closing event. Okay, so basically that is it. Now, if you check the next question to the same thing there, it's well. Yeah, the closing event with the figure is what? 10,500. If you check the footnote, it's 9,300. It's lower, the same show. The same show, okay. That is it. Now I'll project another question again. First look at it. Another question again. Now let's look at this particular one too. The inventory figure here is what? 3150. And that is a closing inventory. If you see cost of sales in a trial balance, the event figure there is what closing event. Okay. Let's go to the footnote. Yeah, please are the last footnote, the last footnote. So the net realizable value of the stocks or the event as of 31 December 2019 was what 3.5 million. Meanwhile, the cost is what? The cost is 3.15 million, but then I is what 3.5. So what should be the accounting treatment? So let's go to the board. Let's go to the board. What should be the accounting treatment? The cost is 3150. And now we is three five zero zero. What would be the value? What would be the value? You have to select a lower. So yeah, we have to select a cost. If the cost is lower, do not no written down. If the cost is lower, no written down. So here, no written down. You do what? Nothing. That is it. If the cost is lower, just pick the cost and then you move on. You do nothing. If the cost is lower, you do nothing. I'll be get it. Okay. Now let's continue the game. There's another one that we saw last but one. So this question. You don't need to touch this figure. The closing event we're given to. That's the NLV given to us because the NLV is higher. So you have to pick what the cost as the event figure. Okay. So that one, you do nothing. You only treat your cost and go. So we should take note. Now let's look at this particular one, Zamsi. You're looking so many versions. Zamsi. Zamsi too, if I check. When you see purchases in a trial balance, the event figure is open event, whether stated or not. One of the purchases here. The event here is open event, whether they tell you or not. So the open event is what? Open event. This is open event. And here we mostly value the closing inventory. So take note that is the closing inventory that we are mostly likely to value, not the open, because the open it has been valued last year. So this year it's okay, let's value the closing one. So go to the footnote and go and pick the closing inventory. Go to note two. Inventories as of 31 December 2019 was valued at 50 million, including obsolete inventories amounting to 10% of the total inventory value, which should be written off. So here the examiner stated clearly that we should write 10% of the inventory off. Look at how we are going to trade this. The treatment is slightly different from how we have been doing. 
So let's go to the board. Now they say we should write some part of the event also. So let's go and calculate the closing event. And then let's calculate the cost of sales. So in the cost of sales calculation, yeah, the closing inventory is 50 million. Okay, let's go. So closing inventory is 50,000. And the rated of 10%, so 10% times 50,000, that will give us 5,000. So therefore, the right closing inventory should be what? 45. However, if we use the right closing inventory to calculate the cost of sales, that one, you don't need to add the writing down or written down value again. I will illustrate this. So assume that we have a Ghana city area, calculating cost of sales. I'll get the examiner. Open inventory. Let's go and pick the open inventory, which happened to be 40,000 from the question. Open inventory is here, 40,000. Let me pick purchases in addition, so I'll not come back again. Purchases is worth 2.2 million. That's purchases. Open inventory is 40,000. Purchases are worth purchases. Purchase is 2.2 million. Now let's closing inventory. The closing inventory happened to be what? 45,000. I was surprised. This will give me the real cost of sale. So much. Have you seen? When I do this, I don't need to add the 5,000 to it again and tell the examiner that. Inventory written down. Written down of 5,000. No, 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 no. We don't do that. So take note. It means that here, yeah, the reason is this the right closing inventory was used to calculate the cost of sales. So there's no need for us to what, do any written down. The right closing inventory was used. Now let's show something how we normally set this exam questions. Now be with me. Now be with me. Let's do something together. Make sure that you understand this part first before I waste it. If you don't get it, kindly let me know. And let me go over again before I now waste the case. Because I'm about to waste the case. Okay. Oh, okay. So thank God that everybody gets it. Now, let's assume that we have calculated the cost of sales using the wrong closing event of 50,000. But you're supposed to find the answer first. Can you get me the answer first before I continue? Can you get me this answer first before I continue? So this and this is 5,000, right? That should give us um, 2195 planets. Is that true? Can you confirm if this is true? Okay, so this is the correct or the true cost of sales. So this is the real cost of sales that we are going to keep now financial system. So in this particular question, the cost of sales figure that we are going to include in your PNL or the comprehensive income is this. Now let me change things small. Let me change things small. Let me write the correct answer somewhere. Two one nine five thousand. Now when you see cost of sales in a drama one, we have used the wrong one to do the calculation. We have used the fifty thousand. We have not write any inventory down. So now what will be the answer now? So this is the cost of deals that you get. And this one, the one will be between the trial balance, the right TV here, trial balance. Now what will be the answer now? That will be
So two one nine zero thousand, right? Perfect. So this is the wrong cost of sales, and this will be given to you in the trial balance cost of sales. So, so if you see cost of sales in the balance, this is how they have done it, and they give it to us. No, I hear it's supposed to subtract 45, but they have subtracted 50. It says an error. So it's okay. And in that is, we will not give you the purchases for you to go through the procedure. So don't worry. It's okay. Now, pick this cost of sale from the trial balance. It's a per trial balance. And again, add the inventory written down to it. In that case, they'll not give you this. They'll not give you this. They'll just give you this and this. Good. So inventory written down, have you seen? You add your 5,000, you find the difference. The inventory written down was 5,000. You now add it to it. You finally get the right closing event. So you've seen it, right? Okay. On that note, I'll project some questions for a test right away. And then you will try right away. Okay. So that is it. So this is how you will go by the closing inventory. Again, there's a question here called so far to gain. Good, this is the question. So far to gain. The books of so far to gain limited. Now we send this. So kindly capture it. You, you are going to calculate the cost of this right now. Let me go to the inventory notes. Yeah, they calculated it, but wrongly. So let's see. Let's go to the footnote. It said the net realizable value of the inventory as of the first March 2018 happened to be 11 million. So now capture it somewhere, 11 million. So I'm going to come back again to here. Can you capture this 11 million? When you go up. So let's go. Now the closing event or the closing stock happened to be worth 12 million. Meanwhile, the, the cost is 12 million. Meanwhile, the NRV is worth 11 million. So how do you treat it? Yeah, you do have the purchases here. You do also have the cost of goods sold here. So how do you treat it? Kindly capture the screen and then try your hands on it. And then for me, the answer. Can you capture the screen? Good. And capture the note two, the note five two. Capture the note five two. Okay. So we can move on. Okay, now let's continue with our uh, question solving. So come back again to question five. I'll do question five A, then you try question five B as a work. You should have a lot of work to do. And then for submission, some of this work will solve them already. I hope you got it. So let's try the question 5A. Let's try the question 5A. Now let's continue our question solving from the material, our own material here, the one that you do have. An inventory count on 31st December 2015 listed goods with a cost of 10.5 million. This includes some damaged goods that had a cost of 800. This, this would require a remedial web costing 450,000 before they could actually be sold for 
estimated 950. I like that. Now, how do you try this? How do you value this? Now, tell me the inventory figure and tell me the extract from the profit and loss and the financial position. First, the entire inventory, the entire closing inventory of the entity happened to be 10.5 million. Okay. This 10.5 million, some, this includes some damaged goods that had a cost of 800. So not all the closing inventory of 10.5 million that they are doing the valuation. The only value was the damaged goods. This will require the remedial work costing 450,000 before they could actually be sold for estimated figure of 950. For this particular question, uh, I just a footnote that I picked. Okay. Just a footnote that I picked from 2016 question. Okay, so great. So this is the full question. Cozilo. This is a full question. I just picked that note from here. So let's stop this. An inventory count on 31st December 2015 listed goods with a cost of 10.5 million. This includes some damaged goods that had a cost of 800,000. This would require the remedial work costing 450,000 before they could actually be sold for an estimated amount of 950,000, that's not one. So how do you treat this? Let's go to the, the travel. They've given us the closing inventory. Here is the cost of the closing inventory. The cost has been determined here. So once they've determined the cost, that means they'll give us the cost of sales. And once there's cost of sales, that means we will get what's written down and have to adjust it to the cost of sales. So let's go and value the closing inventory. So when you go, all what you have to do is first, let's go to the board. So all what you have to do is Examiner. Yeah, we are not valuing all the closing events. We have to take notes. We are only valuing the damaged ones. And then the, go and add the remainder or go and add it to the good ones. So I write here damaged goods. So maybe weapons. One. I'll start saying damage. In that example, now is damage or slow moving event, slow moving. So take note, if you are passing a foot in that damage or slow moving, you use one of them. So I'll tell the examiner that I need two items lower, right? I need my cost of the damage goods, which is worth 800,000. What is the NLD of this damage use? So this can be estimated selling price. They can sell it for 950000 after a remedial work. So the remedial work, yeah, let me put cost here. Remedial work, that's the cost to complete the sale, which is 450000 according to the question. So, Therefore, what is the cost? What is there now? This one give us 500,000 or so. It can give us 800,000. So how do we value the slow moving inventory? How do we value the slow moving inventory? So how do you value the slow moving inventory? Any idea? It must be valued at what NRV because the NRV is lower. Good. Here, what will be the entry? Go so that means the slow moving event is written down by what 
300,000. Write it down. By 300,000. That is the meaning. How do you treat this in the book? If the goose is only about this 300,000, then what's the accounting treatment? First of all, this 300,000 is a cost or it's an expense to the organization. You have some goods that the cost is 800, but now you can only retrieve 500,000. So therefore, it's a cost to the organization. So we have to add it to the cost of sales. So add this to the cost of sales. Now, tell me the inventory figure that they should add, they should treat it, or they should add it to their financial statements. Let me do some small accounting treatment here. So the account treatment, so treatment, let's do the treatment here. Number one, add 300,000 to this your cost of sales. Why? Because okay. Okay, so the question is, uh, why is it that here we did not use the 10,500 minus 800, right? No. Here we are valuing the damaged goods. So we have to bring the cost of the damaged goods. So let me read here damaged goods, root here damage. So we are valuing the damaged goods, not the good ones. If I should provide Analytics for you. We have something like this. The boost is 10,500. Out of it, damage is what? 800. So the good ones will be, the good ones have to be 10,000. Um, the good ones have to be, any difference? Can you help me? So that's um, 9,700 or so. The good ones will be 10,500 like this. If we take it from, we take it down from it, yes, 9,700. The good one is 9,700. That is it. And the information given to us, the details, for the NLV is not for the good ones. No, the details is not for the good ones. It's only for the damaged one. So we can only value the damaged one at one point. When we get the actual value, then we add it to the correct one. Because the selling price NLV details here is not for the good ones. It's for the damage. Good. So this is how we can do it. Then number two, the treatment number two, that's the difficult section. This one goes to the PNL. So this one is to the PNL. Then the inventory figure. What will be the inventory figure in a financial position? Who can work it out? Who can work it out for the inventory figure in a financial position? I'll go to the long approach. Now, this 800 is in the 10,500. This 800 is in the 10,500 here, as you can see. And which happened to be wrong? So, long approach. Long approach will be like this. The long approach will be like this. We go under the shortcut. Long approach. Be like this. Okay, so total inventory. So cost of inventory. Total inventory is 10,500. Okay. Damage, cost of the damage, which is 800. I'll take it off. That's wrong figure. Yes, because when I do the calculation, it's not the lower. 
and then add what you said the NRV. Add the NRV back to it. This answer. That will give us 10,200. Alternatives. I'll do three treatments. Number one, this is number one. Number two is a shortcut. Or uh, we said I subtract any written down from where? The cost of the inventory when you go to the balance sheet. So number two. So number two, what I'll do is I'll just take the the cost of the inventory, which is 10,500. Then I'll just say, that, okay, written down by, so written down, which is 300. I'll take it off. Let me go 10,200, which is the same as this, right? Then the third one, the third one, the third one is, I just have to add the 500 to this. So this one plus 500. Because then I knew it was 500. So this, when I put them together, to I get what? 10,200. Any approach. So that is how you will solve. So in your balance sheet, the event figure must be 10,200. You add 300 to your cost of sales because of the written down value. And that is it. I'll be getting it very well. So these questions. Uh, let's go to the material. So these questions, they are some questions that we carefully selected and included them in your material. So can you do that for me? Please, you are trying Adonko and Ahonka, that's s and M Limited. Can you try that one for me and submit it? Add it to the trials. Let me see if I can get another one again. I like question six, so in fact, question six, please add it to it then. So you are doing question 5B and question six. 5B and question six. There's another one be that was very good though. Uh, question two, yes, and add question two to it to, to, to kill me. Please, uh, kindly submit it before our next meeting. Good. So that is it. Please, if you do have any question, kindly ask before we close the chapter of the day. If you have any question? Any question? Okay. Right. So if there are no question and you are okay with this, I'm going to please go through all the assignment given before our next meeting and you'll be fine. Then before our next meeting, our next meeting we are going to do IS8. And as usual, uh, when I start the IS8, please go through the, the lecture video first before next Wednesday or before our next meeting. Can we go through the lecture video? Our next page, we are looking at IAS 8. Over there, I will go straight and solve questions. I will presume you've done it because you've gone through the lecture video or the lecture material. Can you go to the lecture material first before Wednesday? Other than that, you sisters. Today, I was doing summary, right? Uh -huh. I may not do the same in IS8. I'll just go straight forward and then finish it. Okay. Okay, so this is how far the good Lord will bring us. Thank you very much for coming.